behalf of the Rotary Club of Tonji Mid Town, I, Rotarian Siddha Sardesai, President of the Rotary Club of Tonji Mid Town, would like to welcome you for this finals of the Rotary Orator of Goa. As you all know, the topic for today, for the finals of the Orator of Goa contest for teachers, is teaching critical thinking and media literacy in the age of information overload. Each participant is permitted to speak for four minutes. At the end of three minutes, a bell will be rung to indicate what minute is left. After four minutes, a double bell will be rung. And please note that negative marks for exceeding time limit might be there, but if they're the sole discretion of the judges. Participants may be asked to stop if he or she goes well beyond the time. As was mentioned, even in the preliminaries, the same thing applies to the finals. There shall be no reference to religion or political party whatsoever, which shall not be permitted. The contest is being judged by a panel of four judges who will judge contestants on maximum marks secured for opening remarks, subject matter, postures and gestures, voice modulation, diction, concluding remarks, and overall presentation. The contestant has the liberty of using the days or the whole space around. The decision of the judges will be final and binding, and any form of canvassing will attract automatic disqualification. Thank you, and I wish all the contestants for the finals of this orator contest all the very best. We have our first contestant on the stage, Yogesh Y. Chenvi Kumkolekar from Indira Bai V. Bhatt Gavlikar High School. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for contestant number one. The life which is not examined is not worth living, said Socrates. What he meant by this dictum was introspect, reflect. Mahesh's father is an economics professor. Yesterday night, he gave a lecture to Mahesh, think before you act. And today, this professor goes in Sanji market and buys one dozen Mankunda mangoes costing 2,500 rupees. Mahesh asks mother, Mama, where does this economic sense prevail? And that brings to me today's topic, teaching critical thinking to students. In this ultra-modern age of media and technology, it is very difficult to take the information because the information is overloaded. It becomes very difficult for the decision maker to arrive at a quality conclusion. And here brings us to media literacy. Media literacy is the method of dissecting media content and critically analyzing it. Once with this overloaded information, one professor went and asked his students, students, please listen to me. There is a prediction that your doctor is going to be toilet after 100 years from now. It will be in the form of chick. Students were very astonished. Then he went on and said, 150 years from now, robots are going to have emotion. They might put us in the zoos and throw peanuts at us. Students went curious. They were not ready to listen. There were heated arguments and discussions. Then he said, see teleportation. I can teleport matter from here to there, which they bluntly rejected. The proposition was rejected, frankly. Then he said, NASA is planning to send spaceship on Mars in 2035. And there came response, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Actually, that teacher was teaching them critical thinking in a very systematic manner. Asking questions, seeking information, analysis. If 
generation and undoubtedly the skepticism, not the radical one, in order to arrive at a good conclusion. This is the world of critical thinking. And anything has listed this as one of its objectives. World Health Organization has listed, listed this as a life skill. We did not teach children how to operate mobiles, but we have to teach them cyber safety. This is the information world. The life is very hectic, and we teachers have a Herculean task in order to teach this critical thinking in a manner that will be the way of their life. We have to say this. We have the better experiences of life. We have faced all hardships. So we can convey this message and teach them so nicely that the purpose is met. At this juncture, I recollect Khalil Gibran, the well-known writer. And he said, I quote, Your children are not your children. They come through you, but not from you. They are the sons and the daughters of life's longing for itself. You may teach them love, but not thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. Time and time waits for them, not for yours. Thank you very much. Contestant number two is Vinita Chico from the Rosary High School, Ujira. Oh, I'm so worried. I'm so inconsolable. I just can't understand. Who are my fake friends? Who are my real friends? I can't. Teacher, can you please, please help me? I can't make out, I can't distinguish between the real world and the fake world. Good evening, respected judges, Mr. Zingli, and all the Rotarians, and my dear ladies and gentlemen. Today, I stand before you, a teacher at the Rosary High School, Mrs. Vinita Shiko. And I'm going to speak to you today on the topic, teaching critical thinking and media literacy in an age of information overload. As you see, our students face so many difficulties. They just can't make out what this real world is all about. And so we can help them to think critically. We can help them to evaluate, analyze, ask questions, keep asking questions, find out what the real world is all about and not the fake world that they often live in. How can we help them choose wisely between different types of media? We can educate them, we can talk to them, we can inform them about the different types of media available today and what they can choose. I had a very nice experience with a student who asked for my advice once, and I'd like to share it with you. He came to me one day and said, Teacher, from tomorrow, I'm not coming to school. And I said, why? How can you leave school suddenly in the middle of the year? He said, you know, teacher, my papa has passed away, and I've got to work and help my mom and my sister make a living for themselves. And I said, but that can't stop you from school. You've got to be educated, you know. Come, I said, come, let's sit down. Let's see what other solutions are there in front of you. And so we sat down for quite a while, and we listed various things that he could do to make some money. And this was a boy who was in standard 10, all of 15 years old. So we listed out, he said, maybe I could sell something in a little shop, but then I'd have to stay there many hours. Maybe I could bake. I'm good at baking, teacher. Maybe I could bake. And finally, when we listed out, we thought about it critically. We analyzed, we kept thinking about it. We realized that the best way he could do both, study as well as to help his family, would be to sell newspaper. So one day, I took him by car to sell newspaper. After that, he went by cycle, sold papers and milk in the morning, came to school. Today, he's doing engineering and doing very, very well. So 
Yes, we have to teach our students to think critically and use media well. He made a group on media. He made, you know, he could get his orders. He could count his money. He made everything beautiful. So that was an excellent. I'd like to end by saying a little verse that I have given. There are so many things we can choose from on the net, but on our teacher's help, we can surely fail. The teachers can teach us to evaluate, analyze, and spot, and or to critically think when in a mess we report. And so, I'd like to end by saying, we teachers should and can make a difference in our children's lives by teaching them to think critically and using media wisely. Thank you. Ras D'Souza from Father Abner Multipurpose High School, Verna. Put your hands together for contestant number three. I lost my parents and I was just three years. Nena took me in. Then over the years, Nena nurtured me. She would fry the best fish using plain coconut oil. Nena was my first teacher. She would often quote Aristotle's words to me. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Respected members of the jury, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you here have or had had a nena like mine? Raise your hands. Ladies and gentlemen, nena's teachings were simple but profound. Don't take things at face value and always think for yourself. These are lessons that have always stayed with me throughout my life and I'm eternally grateful for our guidance. Today, I stand before you as a proud teacher molded by my nana. I understand from the moment my students get up in the morning, they are bombarded with information. Let me tell you a story of a young student of mine who was struggling with his appearance. He tried every cream on the internet, trying to look fair and handsome, like his neighbor Ricky. I remembered my Nana's teachings and I spoke to him. I told him about the importance of being happy with who he was and not falling prey to misinformation on the internet. Later I asked him, did you speak to your parents? No, teacher, he said. My parents have no time for me. They're too busy with their mobiles and their own lives. Realizing how important it is to guide young minds, I spoke to my students. Dear boys and girls, I read, the digital world contains more information than the whole world's libraries combined, and much of it comes from unreliable sources. Don't take things at face value. If there is something trying to push against traditional knowledge of values, reason, cross-check everything, you can try out stocks.com. It is the oldest and largest fact-checking uh, fact website online. Dear students, question yourself. From where did you get this information? Is there any agenda behind it? This is critical thinking and media literacy. I'm not telling you what to think. I'm simply telling you how to think. Question everything and form your own opinion. Evaluate, analyze. Talk to your family members if you spot misinformation. Dear students, be responsible digital citizens and understand the consequences of your online actions. This was my advice to my students. Ladies and gentlemen, Nena is smiling down on me. Nena, love you to the moon and back. Thank you. Number four, Sneha Suresh Gauss from the St. Anthony High School, Montagiri. Put your hands together for contestant number four. Information is power. What would it be give to know it all? And when this power is on the palm of your hands, what wouldn't you do to use it all? 
and the reservoir of this information is none other than media. We the people of this world are divided geographically yet unified by media. Media in its print, mass and social forms play an instrumental role in making this world a global village. It serves as a conduit via which the general public can learn and shape opinions about various concerns and subjects. Media reinforces democracy by invigorating the freedom of information. It has given voice to the voiceless. The information that media gives us today is a reflection of our modern society. And it is through this information that we can see the world beyond the range of our vision. Through TV, through radio, newspaper, and social media, information is flowing from all domains. We are literally and metaphorically drowning in information. On the outside, this heap of information seems pragmatic. But on the hindsight, this gigantic mountain of information is causing information stress. What to believe and what not to? This dilemma is exhausting. How do we know that the information we are consuming is uncompromised, that the integrity of the information is untouched? Today, the channel of information flow seems to be impaired by commercialism. It has become a pawn of the powerful. The information seems scripted, curated, and filtered. And this kind of counterfactual information is likely to trigger complexity and dismay. The information overload may lead us and keep us confused and brain if we are unable to separate the facts from fiction. No doubt, the reach of information has magnified, but its reliability has faced a massive downfall. Information overload is making us fall prey to rumors, downright lies and half-truths. The only thing that can help us get through this crisis is media literacy and critical thinking. Now, how do we become media literate? How do we think critically? There is no definite roadmap or no definite curriculum for this. We need to te teach our students whenever they consume any information, they need to have an eye for detail and nose for object objectivity. They shouldn't rely on any kind of unreliable sources. They need to investigate, find for evidences, ask questions. They need to seek for sincerity and not sensationalization. It is the quality that matters and not the volume. Whenever they want to create and transmit information, they need to be vigilant. They need to be responsible that the information is uninfluenced and unbiased. The power of information is mighty. It can eradicate the darkness of ignorance. And media serves us with a buffet of information. But we need to teach our children that only with the help of media literacy and critical thinking, they can make healthy choices from that place. Thank you.